Hi, we are going to be reading and looking at looking at the first chapter of the Art of War, and it is called the chapter is called Laying Plans. And you might ask, how can this help me in my life? You know, the Art of War is just a really old guy talking about warfare. How can that be helpful at all in my life? And the beauty of it is if you just switch one word in the sentence, it revolutionized this book. Change it to The Art of Competition. That's how I think of this book. Whenever Sun Tzu says war, I think of competition because they're very similar. You know, it just one entails, you know, to have warfare and one, I mean, can't have warfare too. I mean, you could make the argument that conflict is just warfare on a different scale. But, or competition, not conflict. And so, I'll read this little bit that I was studying today of Sun Tzu. Sun Tzu starts off this book by saying, or this little, it's like a couple pages long, it's not that big of a book. But Sun Tzu starts off by saying, the art of war is, the, is of vital importance to the state. It is a matter of life and death, a road to safety or ruin. What does that mean? That means you're going to have to compete one day. And it is very important that you know how to compete. If you do not know how to compete in your life, and you just, you know, stumble onto competing one day, and then you don't really know how to win, you're going to get squashed. You're going to get thrown back in life, and life's just going to slap you across the face. And what are you going to do? You're going to have to take it, because you don't know how to compete. Sun Tzu is going to teach you how to compete. And he says, it's either a road to safety or ruin. When you go to compete, you either are going to crash or stir or thrive. You want to thrive. I want to thrive. How are we going to thrive? He says there's five things you're taking cons into consideration whenever you are competing. I simplified it to four. I tried to simplify it to three, but I just couldn't. So, the number one, the, and I think this is the number one thing you have to take into consideration, but I think they're all very important as well. He says, I, this is my kind of phrasing of it. He says, the, number one, the moral of the people. This factor is about the people under control, under order by the commander. The people under order must be in complete accord with their ruler, no matter what comes their way. If you have a team and they are not on, they do not have the vision in mind, they do not understand the goal, your team will fail because when you don't have a specific vision you don't have fundamental ideas in common things shatter America nowadays I don't want to get political in this I will get political eventually because I love politics but, but you look at America nowadays I'm not saying America's good or bad look at America now and Everyone has different fundamental values of the country. Should the country be democratic? Should it be republican? Should it be conservative? Liberal? Should it be atheistic? Should it be monotheistic? Should it be, you know, polytheistic? Should there be abortion? Should, it be, should there be guns? No one has the same fundamental values anymore. And it's a testament to how the Founding Fathers set up the Constitution and how the Founding Fathers started our society because they rallied us on the, on the, you know, behind liberty. They rallied us behind liberty, small government, and the war, and the war for independence. And those three things, we all had those in common. Nowadays, I don't think I can name three things that are in common with all of us. Right? Maybe, because I live in Oklahoma. <laughs> I live in the middle of nowhere. Not really. Oklahoma's a nice place. I like Oklahoma. But I live in Oklahoma, so I'm sure I could find people with, the, you know, similar values to me. But in the general United States, I don't believe in that anymore. I don't think that most people have a set of core values that, they, that we all agree with. In the beginning of our republic, we did. Sun Tzu says, 
But if you're trying to start a country or you're trying to go compete, if you want to make a team, you have to make sure <coughs> that your whole team is in accord with the ruler. They all have I they all have the same values. They all have the same vision. They know the goals. I want to start a podcast soon. And I want to bring on my uncle with me. So what am I going to do? I'm going to make sure my uncle knows my vision and my goal. I'm not going to start this podcast without him knowing those things. Because let's say he has a different vision than me. We need to talk about that. We need to make sure we come to a vision so we can go together. You know, have that vision, have that goal, and thrive to it. That's what he says in his first point, which is the moral of the people. I want to get better at public speaking, and I have a really bad problem with my voice getting super raspy and dry when I talk. Like, it's super dry and like raspy right now. So let's see how I make this through. But if any of you have any suggestions, just put them down below for how to, like, you know, make it to where your throat doesn't get so dry when you're talking, when you talk. Um, maybe it's just because I talk wrong. I talk way with my throat. I don't talk, I don't talk, like, out here. I probably could talk out here and it'd be a lot easier, but I talk back here. So let's keep going. Um, he says, number two, the nature of things and the nature of the world. He says, and I, I say, this is talking about how you use elements of nature, like geography, weather, time, psychology, etc. If you are going to go into a race, right, and you're going to go and race uh, your Usain Bolt, well, do you think the nature of you can do that? Do you think your physiology will allow you to beat Usain Bolt? No. No, you can't beat Usain Bolt. I can guarantee you that. No matter who is watching this. If you can beat Usain Bolt and you're watching my video, then please send me a comment. I would love to meet you. I'd love to talk to you. I don't know if I necessarily know about meeting you. But anyways, you have to understand the nature of things. Think about the Civil War. There's actually two points about this. What was the number one goal of the Civil War? It was to, you know, advocate for um, unifying the Union and to wither out the South. The South, it was called the... What was it called? I can't remember the exact um, battle plan that it was called or the, you know, the, the tactics, that they, or the whole strategy that they were using the North was to defeat the South. But essentially what it was is to just wither them out. Just hold out long enough, you know, make it to where they can't trade with anyone, make it to where no, nothing's, you know, being able to trade, just squeeze them in, you know, it's where they just, ha they forcibly give up. Um, and they understood, they did that because they knew the psychology, and they knew the nature and the things that they had, right? And they knew that, okay, if we just wait them out, they're gonna have to give up, right? And if they do give up, then we win. We don't have to go and destroy them. They have to give up. And so that's what they did. And so if you can understand that, you can understand the geography of what you're doing. You know, understand the 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 psychology, you know, if you're if you're leading a team and you want them to do a huge project, just know that they're going to they're going to be sore after a while. You have to give them something to so the give them rewards, right? Give them uh what do you call it? Give them stimulus to keep them going. Don't just expect them to do a whole bunch of work without any reward. That's number two. Number three, chance, risk, and probability. What's your chance that you're gonna be that kid, that that person that was um that's watching this? If you're if you're that if you're better that um than Usain Bolt at running, would I bet on you? Probably not, just because of your word. But when you think about this at a well, let me read it. It says, chance, risk, and probability. This stands for the chance of something like winning a battle, risk, losing, I don't know what that says, and probability of something like winning and losing. So, understand the probability of your actions, right? When you're investing, 
and you are trying to think is this going to work out understand what are the chances that's going to work what are the prob what's the probability that this is going to you know have that steady growth what is the risk associated with it is it a foreign stock is it a government um, uh, stimulated stock you have to you know is, is it a bond that's in the US Treasury you know understand the levels of risk that you are associating your team to if what's a good example for this um, and I think it's really good to make sure that the team knows the risks too but make sure that they know the rewards I think I'm gonna add that in here real fast whenever you have a team going do something very hard you must reward them if you are a general that does not reward your people or you are a leader that does not reward whenever you do things your team will not want to do work for you because they have no incentive to do anything people work by incentives charlie munger said in the 25 cognitive biases the number one bias is the incentive bias the reward slash punishment bias we go towards reward and we go away from pain you as a general must make it to where people feel like they are go if they stick with you they're going towards reward and if they go away from you that they are going away from they're going towards pain you have to ingrain this in your people and in your you know in your team last thing number four leadership what type of leader should you be make sure you're implement implementing incentives and having de incentives or uh, pain involved whenever they lead um, number uh, and he um, some of the virtues he says the uh, a, a leader needs to have is you must be strict you have to be a strict wise courageous and sincere leader okay so how can that be applicable to me well strict if you have a rule follow the rule right being sincere say things that you mean so if you are strict you know say something and then mean it be genuine be very sincere wise do you want to be a dumb general no study study and improve your wisdom improve your wisdom be strict be sincere be wise Last thing, be courageous. Alexander the Great, he was very courageous. He was very strict. He was very sincere and he was very wise. He knew the battle plans. He knew the chance, risk, and probability of what was going to happen. He knew the nature of the field. He knew that he had this people, the morale of his people on his side. He was strict. If someone did not obey him, he would make sure that everyone saw that he did not obey him and he would be punished. He was wise. He knew how to look ahead. And he was courageous. He did things knowing that, you know, maybe this isn't the best thing. Maybe I'll die if I go and do this. But I'm going to be brave and I'm going to be courageous. As a leader, you must do these four things. Um, what else? I think it's all for now. Um, so just remember those things. When you have a team, get the moral of the people. Make sure you're, everyone's on, aligned with your goal. Number two, make sure you understand the nature of people. You know, people like incentives. And people are going to get bored and they're going to get tired. Make sure that they keep on wanting to do things. Um, understand the chance, risk, and probability of things. If, you know, if you're going to take your whole team to Alaska... Understand the risk of something bad happening and all the liability of it. You just understand liability um, and the, the chance of winning. What's going to happen if you win? What all are you going to gain? Understand your calculations. And the last thing, be a leader. Be a leader that is strict, courageous, sincere, and wise. Thank you for watching this video. Um, if you'd like to, leave a comment. Uh, some of the things that you've learned from this book. I'll be doing more of these. Thank you for watching. Subscribe.